the siphon uh, pressure is just lagging behind the uh, the tower pressure by about 3 psi so the water pressure on the gauges below will lag in a bit of pressure I think so but a lot going on inside that stainless steel boiler right now 245 degrees uh, water temperature and we're looking at almost 20 psi now and getting up there 20 on the uh, upper steam area and below on the siphon we're looking at about 17 we're gonna try the uh, the number nine I've started some cladding experiments on the uh, chest here because the bolts are right through the whole case so it's sort of unattractive but we'll get that finished next week or something maybe I'm gonna have to work on the uh, brass uh, I've got it hooked up underneath there right now and it, it fits really well but I do have to start the tricky part of the lagging now forming it around and over switches or uh, levers and stuff like that for the bleed valves we're going to uh, try it without the governor I wasn't able to find an o-ring so we have to wait for the long boat on the o-rings from England maybe we're going to try to set it up here so you can get a good shot of what's going on well, I'm gonna get pretty wet sitting here I think Once this gets going, it's going to go. Oops, didn't want it to get run away there. Well, that's a bit of work. board is a bit unbalanced there. I'm not hearing too much of a clack, but I have some extreme gland nut leaks. We're going to have to work on that waterfall coming out of there, I think. But that's not a big issue at all. We don't have any leaking out of my uh, new uh, fittings, which is good to see. Prop it up here with some wood, I think. Yeah, the water coming out of the gland, that's a little bit extreme. Try to get some lighting here. PSI. A little bit of clacking, but nothing too extreme. I would be oiling it right now if I wasn't holding on to it, so I should do that maybe. A little bit of airdrop oil here. It's quieted down with that. And we're maintaining 9 or 10 psi. I really wanted to do this to work in the engine a bit and have it find its spot and also check and uh, see where the leaks were coming from. And build a little bit of pressure up.
fill temperature is 240 degrees. Pressure is dropped from 20 to about 10 psi at the steam tower, 9 psi at the uh, siphon. And that second piston ring will come in handy, I think, since we do have quite a bit of uh, leakage there. track down this one little clack sound here I think. There you go, Stuart number nine. Back in order. Time to uh, now fine tune and uh, finish it up. Well, I've been running it for about an hour and a half, two hours now. There we go. And I've been tightening down things as I let it run. As it sped up, I was listening carefully and I would tighten down the uh, slide rails and those are holding quite well now. And it's worked itself into that, but the uh, actual shaft bend at the end there is going to be affecting all kinds of things. And from riding old motorcycles, I know that one thing will end up destroying the rest of everything else. So I will probably get the shaft if I'm going to run this engine at all, and machine it if I have to, and uh, get the live center out and that kind of thing. But I did repack the gland nut after that steam, steam experiment, and I actually put back in some of the graphite yarn, less the tar. Uh, but I've been making my own graphite yarn as well by mixing graphite powder in with the oil that I use. And then I also coated the whole engine pretty much every surface with graphite and then with oil so that any low spots would be filled with graphite, any pitting, any micro pitting. And that seems to have smoothed out things quite well. This is on air, so I don't have a lot of power here. It's maybe five or six PSI, but if I push the governor now, To its full extent, you can see considerable slowing of the engine, and it does return without any assistance, which is pretty mandatory. The O-ring will pull it down for the last couple of millimeters, but uh, other than that, I'm wondering how the steel wire wound bands will work, the pulleys, we'll see. No leaks on the back end here. made gaskets, use normal paper, but I grease them so that there's grease on the paper and that'll preserve it a bit as well as keep the oil in and uh, I guess we're going to uh, get a pulley and we'll see this governor work real time with the engine actually actuating it shouldn't be able to overpower this engine at all and uh, by adjusting the top here I can give the travel of the spring a little bit of an extension. The fly balls, they don't fly out too far at all. We're talking less than a half a centimeter. So, not too dramatic that way, but if it works, that's what counts. So they were almost at shut off. I'm going to pull it up a little bit more. Pushing the actuator arm. more threads that means that I've been uh, it's been loosening up it's operating smoother now because I uh, could not adjust it any further up before it would kill the engine so friction is down and 
and that's almost shut off now. Butterfly valve would be closing quite a bit. I'm just going to turn it down a bit. You don't want it to stop. Excellent. <coughs> Bleeder valves still runs with them open, which is a good sign. Albeit it's slower, so it's a governor in itself, reducing the compression at the ends of the stroke. Excellent for testing. Probably the one of the best features to have for testing your inlet and outlet timing. Something I would add to an engine if I was going to uh, build my own. Perhaps put them on the bottom, put the levers up here, but have the drains coming out of the bottom to avoid that rust collection of pooling water in the bottom of the cylinder in case it was left. And uh, there we go. The nine. <laughs>